sound bit really. Now you've done it. You've called down the wrath. This is where the road ends. Must have left. Hmm. Nothing. Huh. Maybe I need some sleep. Ye have sown death, and so shall ye reap it. Take it. Die where you stand. Prepare to meet your maker. Taking cover. Watch out. Yes, hide. Run and hide in fear. Slink away. Squeeze between the rocks if you can. Hiding, are you? Well, I'm coming to find you. Work well done. All in a day's labor serving the good lord. Finished. <sighs> there will be time to grieve later. Let this death mean something. Get down! Duck! Daniel must have made it to the tunnel by now. But there are sorrows all over the valley. We have to help them and get Daniel out of here. Welcome back. What can I do for you? We should have given you a better welcome on your first visit to Zion. But from what I hear, the White Legs beat us to it. White Legs seem to be the only visitors we have these days. And I wouldn't have expected anyone from the Mojave to come looking for us. And you're a courier, no less. Not the one I was expecting, but I suppose he wouldn't have come with a caravan. I don't know if you were close to the other members of your group, but you have my sympathy. I pray for the safety of all good people who come to Zion, even Gentiles. But we can't expect God to do all the work. Welcome back. What can I do for you? The time for talk has passed. The Lord's work must be done. This is taking too long. We can't let salt upon wounds escape. I'm going to find a way around. God willing, we will finish this together. You'll be back. I can still smell you. Gave up? Wise choice. Gone. No matter. I'll find you. Let's end this. Judgment's coming. Time's up. Only a matter of time. Time will run out on you yet. Hide while you can. That's enough! Ah! A pointless death. That should have been avoided. Huh? What? Hmm. That's it! Enough! Forward! He has a debt to pay for what he's done, and I've come to collect. And so he's chosen to cower in the water like a dumb animal. God's will. He never had any dignity to begin with. None of them did. But for your sake, for the sorrow's sake, I'll let him die on his feet. Stand up and look at what's come for you. God be with you. Thank you. Follows Chalk can help you find your way around the valley. He's inexperienced, but he knows enough of our language to ignore the taboos about pre-war buildings. You're a good neighbor to us. We all go through periods of darkness. In such times we can turn to the Lord, but it's good to have friends. Daniel and I need pre-war tools to help us navigate beyond Zion. Should we need to evacuate, these instruments will be vital to us. Normally, we would have some of the dead horses or sorrows look for them. But many pre-war buildings in the valley are taboo. They won't go inside. The choice is yours, of course. But you're not going to find a way back to the Mojave without our help. Even though you made your way in, there's no easy way back. Without a map, you'll die in the wilderness. Daniel, one of our missionaries, can help you. But you've caught us at an inconvenient time. We're under continual threat from the White Legs. We are responsible for leading and protecting the sorrows and dead horses. They are smart people, 
but not as worldly as you or I. I am preparing the dead horses for war, and Daniel is preparing the sorrows for other things. There are many reasons why that would be a bad idea. I will illuminate three. First, do not believe that because Daniel is a missionary, he is incapable of or unwilling to defend himself. Second, if you harm Daniel or any of the sorrows or dead horses, I will find you. Make no mistake. God willing, you will not leave this valley. Lastly, waging war against good people is bad for the soul. This may not seem important to you now, but it's the most important thing I've said. There are only so many ways you could have entered Zion from the south. You descended by routes that you cannot safely ascend to return to the Mojave. I'm not telling you this as a trick. Whether you want to help us or not, you can't get back without Daniel's assistance. I'm sure he'll be willing to assist you, but we have other responsibilities at the moment. Happy trails. I remember. They were good friends. I have bad news for your employers. New Canaan was destroyed, its citizens scattered. All because of the White Legs. And Caesar, of course. The White Legs want to join the Legion. Caesar's rite of passage is the destruction of the New Canaanites, almost assuredly because of me. The good news is that we can help you find your way back. Daniel, one of the other New Canaanites, has made many maps of the region. The bad news is that we can't help you right now, not with everything that's going on. Go with God, brother. Right. I thought he might. It's been some time since I visited civilized places. I don't have fond memories of them. But I have always seen these places from the outside. I'd rather not influence him more than I already do. Why don't you talk to him? Then you must bear witness of this revelation to Daniel. The obviousness of it escapes him. We both desire a non-violent solution to this problem. Where we differ is that only one of us believes it is possible. Speak your heart to Daniel when the opportunity presents itself. There may yet be time to save Zion. Given those two choices, yes. In the best of all possible worlds, they would just leave us in peace. But they won't. I don't enjoy killing, but when done righteously, it's just a chore, like any other. Practiced hands make for short work, and the good Lord knows there's much to be done here. They're still God's children. But if they turn against their brothers and sisters, won't listen to reason. If they pollute the Lord's temples on earth, like Zion, who are we to stand by and let them continue? Daniel does not yet see things the way we do. He is the John to our Matthew and Mark. When you have a moment, speak with him. There may still be time to save Zion from the white legs, to keep God's children here, in this living temple. I understand. The safest way for you to resolve this is to help me and the dead horses defeat the white legs. Daniel wants to evacuate the sorrows from the valley. I think this will be much more difficult for everyone, you included. You can rationalize if you'd like. A lucky coincidence of my faith in your pragmatism leading to different goals by the same means. But you'll have to help convince Daniel, because I can't do it alone. The good Lord knows I've tried. God told Moses that the tribes of Cain would not be welcome in Zion. The white legs are as close as I have seen, beyond hope, beyond redemption. But if the sorrows die in a state of ignorance, their salvation may be delayed as well, passing from life in this world to a spiritual prison. We have a responsibility to protect this place and those who have come to dwell in it. If you feel the same way, speak with Daniel. There may yet be time to save Zion from those who are too ignorant to understand what they have come to destroy. Talk to Daniel about fighting the White Legs. 
He wants to evacuate the valley, believes it is best for the sorrows physically and spiritually. He knows I disagree, but believes my desire to fight is the result of my history of violence. Perhaps if he heard an argument from you, he could be convinced. In any case, it's important enough to try. Then as a Gentile, you should find this to be even more beneficial. If the sorrows stay in Zion, you will always have a link to New Canaan. If the sorrows leave Zion, so too do the New Canaanites. What's more, you'll have more white legs coming farther south. You may not be concerned over matters of faith, but this is a case where faith and practicality coincide. No one wants the white legs here. We just need to convince Daniel that it's our responsibility to ensure that doesn't happen. Living in willful ignorance is an ugly thing, but God often speaks loudest in the wild places of his creation, like Zion. Zion is a place and a state of being that has been lost to us several times in the past. Each loss is a new fall of man. And after each fall, we weep in strange new lands and dream of Zion, dream of visiting vengeance upon those who took it from us. But this is the waking world in which we live. There is no need to cry, no need to dream. We can act now and stop the white legs here. Daniel and I don't agree on everything, but in our hearts, we both want what's best for the sorrows and dead horses. You've seen what the white legs do, and I think you know what has to be done. If Daniel hears it from someone other than me, well, Zion may not be lost to us after all. Of course, think on it and look in your heart. The light of the mind alone cannot dispel the whole world's darkness. The white legs didn't just force my people out of New Canaan. They butchered everyone who wasn't fast enough to get away. The elderly, the ill, children, those who stopped to help the wounded. It made no difference to them. They can't be reasoned with. The white legs. Daniel believes that if we leave, if the sorrows leave, the white legs will stop. He doesn't understand what this kind of tribe is like. The sorrows need help. We brought the white legs here, the new Canaanites. This is their home, Zion, God's gift to them. In abandoning it, we will gain nothing and will lose more than you realize. Please think about this and look in your heart. The light of the mind alone cannot burn away all darkness. Happy are those who do the work of the Lord. Zion belongs to God and the people of God. It is a natural temple and monument to his glory. When our Lord entered the temple and found it polluted by money changers and beasts, did he ask them to leave? Did he cry? Did he simply walk away? No. He drove them out. It is one thing to forgive a slap across my cheek, but an insult to the Lord requires... No, it demands correction. I and the dead horses are prepared to do what must be done to protect Zion from the white legs. And though Daniel won't accept it yet, there are many sorrows who are also prepared. They may not be warriors, but this is their home. If you have a chance to speak with Daniel about this, Ask him to consider defending Zion instead of abandoning it. He has good intentions, but I fear that if we evacuate the sorrows from this place, it will be lost to them, and us, forever. You are not so certain. Fair enough. We all have doubts. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. But you can be a Thomas for now. Fight the white legs enough, and you'll see the truth. I just hope that by the time you understand, there will still be time to convince Daniel that we have to fight for Zion, to save it and the sorrows. Thank you. It will be for the best. Whether there is a God or not, 
His existence doesn't depend on what you believe or what I say. There is much to be skeptical of in this world, so it no longer surprises me to learn how many people don't really believe in anything. But I believe that our Lord was made flesh as Jesus Christ and died to redeem me, and you, and the sorrows, even the white legs, everyone. They attack everyone who isn't a white leg, especially caravans. They don't know how to survive on their own, so they have to raid. But as for why they are here, they are trying to wipe us out, all of us. They want to join Caesar's legion, and they can only prove their worth by destroying the new Canaanites and everyone we shelter. I survived because the fire inside burned brighter than the fire around me. I fell down into that dark chasm, but the flame burned on and on. The next morning, I woke up and crawled out of the northern edge of the Grand Canyon, that cursed place. It took me three months to reach New Canaan. It was as though the prodigal son had returned. They welcomed me like I had never left, never done anything to shame them. The fire that had kept me alive was love. Their love. God's love. I will never be able to repay the debt I owe to them. But I must try. I don't know for certain, and I don't think NCR knows either. Whatever happened at the Divide was too much for them to handle. Our frumentari told us what they saw. Only fools and madmen would march into a place like that. All roads wind down to the same spot. The grave. They said all that's left there is a gaping wound cut into the earth, cursed and damned. No place for God-fearing folk. No, not then. Back then he was just Edward. Smart man. Young, but we all were. We thought we could hike into the Grand Canyon and talk to Blackfoots. We did, and the Blackfoots were friendly enough at first, but eventually... I've thought back to that day so many times. I must have mistranslated. Something must have been mixed up, because the Blackfoots decided we weren't going to leave. The rest is history, assuming Edward hasn't changed it. You are kind to offer, but no, there's nothing you can do. We don't use chems, but I learned long ago that I'm immune to their effects. It never stops burning. My skin. Every day I have to unwind the bandages and replace them with fresh ones. Exposing my body to the air is like living through it again. But it's better to be clean than comfortable. I was born in Ogden, what people came to call New Canaan. Things were more peaceful when I was growing up. When I was a young man, I went out into the world to do missionary work, as all new Canaanites do. I traveled along the Long 15 and followed 89 South into Arizona. Along the way, I met two men from a group called the Followers of the Apocalypse. Edward Sallow and Bill Calhoun. They came to teach the tribes. Calhoun was a good man. Edward was the one who got us into trouble down the road. I had heard of him, but when we were preparing to enter the Mojave, he didn't seem relevant to what was happening. From what I've learned since Hoover Dam, he handled the Mojave tribes in a fashion not entirely dissimilar from Caesar. It's too bad. For injuries, I suffered long ago. We do. Though the White Legs destroyed New Canaan, they didn't destroy all of our supply caches. All forms of currency are recognized here. Caps, NCR dollars, even Legion coin. Take a look. Yes, take a look. A great deal. There are three, make that four, tribes here in Zion. You've already met the White Legs on the way in. In this camp, you'll find dead horses. In the Narrows, the Sorrows. And finally, there's Daniel and myself. We're New Canaanites. The valley belongs to God, but no. The dead horses live at Dead Horse Point, up the Colorado River. They came here because I asked them to. 
Before I returned to the fold, I visited them years earlier. I looked much different then, but I left an impression on them. I taught them how to hunt more efficiently, how to maintain their weapons and pre-war equipment. When I returned, they showed their appreciation. I wouldn't say that. I am the acting war chief for the dead horses. They look up to me for such matters, but I only have the authority they give me. Daniel is the spiritual leader and main link of the new Canaanites to the Sorrows. He's up in the Narrows right now. I am a new Canaanite. We believe we are the heirs of a spiritual tradition, given to our ancestors thousands of years ago. We have made and kept covenants with our Lord God to honor His laws. In exchange, we are promised eternal salvation after this life. A day will come when our Lord returns to judge us all. Until then, we must honor His laws and start others along the path of salvation if we can. That's why we trade with others and work the tribes. We have more than food and medicine to offer. Good news is our most valuable commodity. In a world filled with misery and uncertainty, it is a great comfort to know that, in the end, there is light in the darkness. Every day we move closer to our judgment. We must do our best to walk in the footsteps of our Lord and teach others how to do the same. For many of us, the road is a difficult one, but the path is always there for us to follow, no matter how many times we may fall. In the Great Basin and Colorado Plateau, all tribes are known for a specific weapon. White legs are known for their big submachine guns, storm drums. They broke into an armory near Spanish Fork and have been using them for years. Of course, the dead horses have their wooden war clubs, and even the sorrows have their Yao Guai gauntlets. This type of forty-five automatic pistol was designed by one of my tribe almost four hundred years ago. Learning its use is a new Canaanite rite of passage. Every day, some days are harder than others. I know it may be hard for you to accept or even to understand. In my heart, I believe that though I am a sinner, I have been saved. And I believe there is something beyond this rock, and this air, and this water around us. Something more that is waiting for us. I have been baptized twice, once in water, once in flame. I will carry the fire of the Holy Spirit inside until I stand before my Lord for judgment. We wear more clothing than them and understand more about technology, but we're still a tribe, a linked family of families. The Boneyard, Phoenix, New Vegas, they're just places, metal and stone. New Canaan dies but the tribe lives on. When the walls come tumbling down, when you lose everything you have, you always have family. And your family always has tribe. I don't think so. The Sorrows have many skilled hunters among them, but no warriors. They have not had to deal with war or raiders for decades. Even though they can hunt a full-grown Yaogwai, they don't know how to deal with the White Legs. That's why we're here. Most don't. It's been hundreds of years since the war. They've developed their own languages. Take the dead horses. We think they were originally refugees from a place called Rez, east of the Grand Canyon. They speak a combination of Rez and a language spoken by travelers who were visiting Rez when the bombs fell. Over time, the two languages blended. I was a translator years ago but it's hard to keep up with all of the tribal variations. The Sorrows believe in a spirit that lives in the caves. Say the spirit punished them once for trespassing. They put special marks around the cave entrances to keep people out. It doesn't work on the white legs, of course, but the dead horses are spooked. Not all of them, but they couldn't take 127 north to get around the mountains. As if Death Valley weren't enough, they had the Divide and Big Empty to deal with. From what the Legion's explorers reported, the Big Empty may as well have been a wall to any living thing approaching it. 
Better than Caesar, but that's not a high standard. Too much love of money and ownership. Not enough love of God and giving. Any society that derives its power and authority from the will of man alone lives apart from God and will crumble in the end. Of course. Love the sinner, hate the sin. With Caesar, it's often very difficult to see through all of that sin to the person inside. I can say that we were both lucky that NCR's supply lines and land routes north of Mojave Outpost were destroyed before the Battle of Hoover Dam. Something bad happened near Death Valley, at a place called the Divide. NCR couldn't cut across anymore, and it slowed down the reinforcements. Terrible storms ripped entire companies apart before they even got to Nevada soil. The aftermath of Hoover Dam could have been even worse for Caesar. This way lies the path to hell. Ed... Caesar needed me to translate. Translation became giving orders. Giving orders became leading in battle. Leading in battle became training, punishing, terrorizing. A series of small mistakes before a great fall. And I stayed in that darkness until after Hoover Dam. After I failed Caesar and he had me burned alive, thrown into the Grand Canyon. I try not to involve myself with matters of the Mojave anymore. All I know is from before the Battle of Hoover Dam. God be with you. Right now I'd like you to focus on helping Daniel. Maybe there will be time later. It's not something I enjoy, but I pray to God that someone may learn from my mistakes. What would you like to know? Let me have a look. My tribe may take too much pride in its mechanical talents, but in truth we are intrigued by the workings of a fine firearm. Let me have a look. Go with God, sister. He's a butcher. Believe me, I know the godless fire that burns in his heart. I've been burned by it myself. He's not the kind to let his subordinates do all the killing. No, he likes to have a hand in it, with that spear of his. He's fashioned himself an abomination before the eyes of the Lord. I'm happy to serve as an instrument of divine justice. The dead horses are capable scouts. Nothing passes into or out of Zion without my hearing of it. Thank you. Now, obviously, taboos against pre-war buildings won't be a matter for you, but take caution when you go rooting around in them. I want to take from them what they took from me, from my family. In this life, I want them to suffer. I want all of them to die in fear and pain. I want to have my revenge against him, against Caesar. I want to call it my own, to make my anger God's anger to justify the things I've done. Sometimes I tell myself that these wildfires never stop burning, but I'm the one who starts them. Not God, not them. I can always see it in my mind, the warmth and the heat. It will always be a part of me. But not today. Go, get out of here, go back. Back to the Great Salt Lake. Caesar would never admit this openly, but he knows that I'm alive. I've killed enough of his frumentarii and assassins that have come looking. I've heard one of them travels the Mojave as a courier. Most of Caesar's agents meet a fitting end in NCR territory, but maybe this one survived. I am the right hand of the Lord and the instrument of his vengeance. No. He and his tribe have worked hard for their wages. Who am I to deny them? Follows Chalk needs more guidance in his life, just not from me. Then let him know. Follows Chalk needs more guidance in his life. I'd prefer it not come from me. If people want to look to me for how to fight, I will show them how. I believe God put me on this earth for that very reason. But to live like me, think like me. No. There are better people for them to look to for such things. Whatever you tell him, I'm sure it will be fine. It's still his choice to make. 
I just want him to make it without looking to me for approval. He's a man. He can make his own decisions. I have to admit, it's hard to believe. That even after all he did to me, all he tried to do to find and erase me from this world, he went first. No doubt this will be good for the Mojave. I can only hope Arizona and the tribes don't suffer as the Legion falls apart around them. I think only Caesar can lead the Legion. I've never met anyone who could take his place. I couldn't. I never had a mind for logistics. I don't know, Laneus, but from what I've heard, he has no interest in leading anyone, unless it's in battle. No. The Legion dies with Caesar. What follows now are just the last steps of a man who does not yet realize that he's walking dead. I think that would put him and you in a difficult position. Caesar has agents looking for me, but he won't admit I'm alive. And even if you killed me, he can't acknowledge that. To do so would be to admit I had never died, that Caesar made a mistake. No, he lives by his lies and shall die by his lies. There is no escaping it. The Lord shall reveal all things in good time. Hmm, good. You're doing God's work, whether you believe it or not. By the rivers of Babylon there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it even to the foundation. O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed, happy shall he be, that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be, that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Do you know what it means? Don't listen to this thing. His cries are those of a mad beast caught in a thicket. He gave no mercy to my family, and I will give none to his. Thank you for this. I know Daniel doesn't approve, but destroying the White Legs is the only way to ensure the sorrows can remain in Zion. You and I will lead a group of dead horse warriors and sorrows hunters into three Marys from this position. Our objective is to find the White Legs' leader, salt upon wounds, and prevent him from fleeing. Show no quarter to the White Legs we come across. Make no mistake about why we are here. This is an extermination. This is taking too long. We can't let salt upon wounds escape. I'm going to find a way around. God willing, we will finish this together. This is taking too long. We can't let salt upon wounds escape. I'm going to find a way around. God willing, we will finish this together. There. That's it. It's finished. When they hear what happened here, the White Legs will crawl back to their great salt lake. If Caesar doesn't kill them, they'll wither and die like the cursed mongrels they are. Come, let's find Daniel. Tomorrow will be here soon and there is still much work to be done. That's it. It's finished. Thank you for staying with me. I couldn't have done this on my own. Let's go find Daniel. Tomorrow we'll be here soon, and there is much to do. It's the same end he would have met if he had died on his knees, but I suppose this was for the sake of the dead horses and sorrows. Still, thanks to your help and the grace of God, the White Legs won't be troubling Zion any more. Let's go find Daniel. Tomorrow we'll be here soon enough, and there is much to do. We warned you at Syracuse, and you persisted. You took advantage of us at New Canaan to drive us out, and like the dogs of Caesar you are, you followed us to Zion. And now you stand on holy ground, a temple to God's glory on earth. The only use for an animal in our temple is sacrifice. Kale wachene conserva o. You understand me, don't you? Don't you? You're not the first to have tried. Make the first shot count. 
you won't get a second. Be careful. Tribals don't always recognize those for what they are. Watch it. You can't just go tossing those all over Zion. Frag out! Fire in the hole! God protect me! Lord, make me thy instrument! God and liberty! We're a tolerant community, but don't overstep the limits of our generosity. This isn't a new Vegas back alley. Watch what you grab. Oh. Uh. Glah. Glah. Oh. Glah. After a long and troubled life, Joshua Graham finally found rest in Zion. In the end, his unswerving militancy had accomplished what the NCR's finest sharpshooters and Caesar's wrath could not. The new Canaanites took comfort in the belief that their brother's soul would again dwell in Zion at the end of days. The threat of the white legs ended. Joshua Graham helped the sorrows and dead horses tend to their fallen comrades and secure Zion. The courier's words had stayed Joshua's wrath in his darkest hour, and in sparing salt upon wounds, he was changed. While he continued to advocate militant opposition to the enemies of New Canaan, he sometimes showed quarter to those who crossed his family. Eventually, this new spirit would diminish the myth of the burned man in distant lands, a small price for the peace it brought to Joshua Graham. With the white legs crushed, Joshua Graham led the sorrows and dead horses in tearing apart and burning the corpses of their enemies. He set about training his army in the way of the Canaanite, and soon the new Canaanites and tribes of Zion were feared well into the Mojave. Legends of the Burned Man grew even more depraved and terrifying. Though the courier had stopped Joshua Graham from executing salt upon wounds, the war chief still fell in battle. The White Legs defeated at Three Marys, Joshua led the sorrows and dead horses in tending to their comrades and burning the corpses of their foes. He continued to advocate militant opposition to the enemies of New Canaan and showed little quarter to those he fought. And yet he was changed. He no longer reveled in the brutality and cruelty for which he had been known in his former life. His inner demons, if not extinguished, were at the least appeased. Yes, of course. <laughs> I don't think so. Good, because I wasn't going to leave. I'm not going anywhere. Get the idea out of your head and get moving. The path lies before us. Let's not waste any time. Yes. What's the point? As you like. Anything else? I'm at your side. Whatever you'd like, it makes no difference to me. Fine. If that's your style, I can adapt. Oh? Anything else? What have you to teach me of tactics? After you. Naturally. It's the only way I know. All right. Anything else? No, thanks. Sorry. That's not going to happen. That sort of thing might be seen as a dumb prank in the Mojave, but it will get you killed out here. Someone there? Don't try to hide from me. You can't stay hidden forever.